Hi guys, it's Lauren Daisy. Welcome back to my channel. Hopefully the mic audio is okay this time around. I think I fixed it, fingers crossed. Okay, well, just gonna have to ignore that. Today, we are looking at the convoluted, confusing, complicated family tree of the Hastings de Laurentiis. We're gonna have some Kingstons in there, Thomas Fields, uh, Kavanaugh, Rollins, it's it's Archer or whatever his name is, who even knows. Um, so we're going to have quite a few people um, in here today, but we're going to go through every single person. Now, there are some people that are going to be missing, such as like the other liars and things. Um, I could easily connect them and I will connect them for you at the end, like how they would be, fit, how they would fit into this, but it would have just been so many people to print out and I wouldn't have been able to fit them all. So we're just looking at them today, but I will, as a little bonus bit at the end, tell you how the, everyone else fits into this as well. I just wanted to say as well, thank you so, so much for all the love on my Alice and D, like the night Alice and D Laurentis disappeared video. That was so much fun for me to make. It took absolutely ages, but I'm so glad that you guys loved it so much. And yeah, so let me know down below if there's any other videos you want to see. I'm definitely going to make the, um, the video about the year before Alison disappeared because a lot of you said that you wanted to see that in the comments. So we're going to have a look at that. And yeah, I've got so many other ideas for Pretty Little Liars, Desperate Housewives, uh, Gossip Girl, Friends, absolutely everything. So yeah, make sure you subscribe as well. Make sure you subscribe um, because those videos are coming. Make sure you like and leave a comment down below. Um, so yeah, let's get straight into it. And down here, we have the key. So we're going to put pictures up of people one by one, and they're all going to be connected by a different colored lines. And down here is what they're all going to mean. I love arts and crafts. I just find it so fun. Red is kissed slash hooked up. So these are people that were just casual. They were not very serious, um, but they did interact in that kind of romantic sense, if you catch my drift. For pink, we have dated slash dating. This also includes people that are married, people that were just very intertwined in this couple they were official they were like boyfriend girlfriend husband wife like that kind of vibe for orange we have half siblings so obviously these are siblings that share one parent as opposed to both for yellow we have full siblings who share both parents there are not a lot of those i think there might only be one or two for green we have cousins for blue is someone who is a surrogate parent and then for purple, we have people that are donor parents, so um, like IVF. Lastly, for brown, this just means children, so these are the children of those people. We are going to start with Veronica and Peter Hastings. Can you tell that I had these printed at the same place <laughs> that my Alison De Laurentiis photos were printed from? So we have Peter and we have Veronica and obviously these two are married when the show begins and I think they stay married despite having quite a few rough patches. Um, I think until the end, I think they finish the show married. They might temporarily separate for a little bit, but I think they do end up married in the end. Correct me if I'm wrong though. So they got a little pink line going and they end up having a child together who I think out of the children we're going to talk about was the first born, I think, and that is Melissa Hastings. Peter and Veronica, their biological child is Melissa. Who lives next door to the Hastings? We have the De Laurentiis. Now we have Jessica De Laurentiis and we have Kenneth De Laurentiis. We find out that before the show started, I think just before Veronica and Peter got engaged, he started having an affair with Jessica. Um, and then they end up getting married and they have Melissa. But this sneaky little affair, I think, continues to go on behind the scenes. And that is when Jessica gets pregnant with Jason. And I don't know if Melissa was born before Jason. I think she was. I think Melissa's supposed to be the oldest. Then Jason's supposed to be a couple years younger than her. Um, or maybe they're like around the same age. I'm not entirely sure. But Jason comes next. And obviously Jessica... I don't know if you can tell because of how bad the printing is, but Jessica is in black and white. So anyone who's in black and white, that means that they are deceased. So Jessica and Kenneth got divorced. I'm pretty sure they got divorced. I think they got divorced after Alison disappeared. 
Um, and then obviously she moves back into the house, I think without Kenneth. And then Kenneth and Jason live in the house. And obviously then Alison comes back. So I do think they're separated, but they do get a pink line because at one point they were married. So here is Jason and obviously Peter and Jessica, they get a red line because they had their little affair on the side. And the result of that affair was having a child, Jason. And Kenneth does not know that Jason is not his um, until quite a bit down the line. I think we find out that Jason's related to the Hastings in like, I think season three, maybe season two. While this is going on around, I think a similar time that Jessica is having Jason, I think maybe even a little bit before that, I can't remember who's older out of Charlotte and Jason, but I think it might be Jason or it might be Charlotte. Anyway, Charlotte comes along. We find out that Jessica actually has a twin sister and that is Mary Drake. So this is how the Drakes come into it. So we have Mary Drake. She gives birth to Charlotte or Cece. Thus we have Cece Drake. And originally in the show, we're kind of meant, we're led to believe that Cece was actually Jessica's child and therefore Jason and um, Allison's sister. But that is revealed not to be true. And she's actually Mary's daughter with Pastor Ted, which was so random and I absolutely hated it. Um, I thought it was utterly ridiculous. They just wanted the shock factor of it being someone that we already knew. But I am a deep Ted and Ashley shipper, okay? So this did not impress me at all. Ted and Mary have Charlotte and... Mary and Jessica get a yellow line because they are full siblings. They are twins. So like I said, Charlotte is born, but she is adopted, I'm pretty sure, by Jessica and Kenneth because Mary was in Radley at the time that she had her or was in Radley shortly after that, something like that. And Jessica and Kenneth end up with Charlotte. But at this time, Charlotte is Charles. Then they end up giving Charles to Radley and Obviously, she grows up and becomes Charlotte that we meet in season three. So here with Charlotte, Melissa and Jason, we have our kind of initial generation of this sort of family. At the top, we've got our kind of top generation, Ted, Mary, Peter, Veronica, Jessica, Kenneth, the parents. Now we're getting on to our first kind of generation of children, the older siblings, Charlotte, Melissa and Jason. We then are going to move on to the younger siblings of the group. And we're going to start off with Jessica and Kenneth, who have their only biological child together, and that is Alison De Laurentiis. That then makes Alison half siblings with Jason. Oh, and I didn't even say, obviously, Peter being both Jason and Melissa's dad also makes them half siblings. Now, this is where things start to get a little bit weird. So we find out that once they are teenagers, I think around that sort of age, that Peter once catches Melissa and Jason kissing. Peter goes out and he's like, whoa, 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 you two cannot be dating. And obviously at the time, everyone's like, why not? Like, I get that you're like the families don't really like each other, but seems a bit weird. Now we know it's because they were actually half siblings. Ew. Which unfortunately gives them a red line. Moving on to the next part of our younger generation, we have a Spencer Hastings. Now, throughout the entirety, okay, the entirety of this show, we are led to believe that Spencer's parents are Peter and Veronica. Then we find out in season six or season seven, I think it's season seven, that actually... Peter is her biological dad, but Veronica is not her biological mum. We find out that Peter, I believe, thinking that she was Jessica, sleeps with Mary Drake. So now he's had, unbeknownst to him, I think, which is very odd and weird, another affair. And this man's genes are very strong, because every time he has an affair, he has a child. So... <laughs> Mary then gets pregnant with Spencer. But oh no, it doesn't stop there because Mary, once she is about to give birth, is back in Radley. And he, Peter tells Veronica about what happened. She agrees to forgive him, Lord knows why. And they decide that they're gonna raise Spencer together as their child. And they take Spencer and leave, thinking that it's done and raise her as their own. Now, 
That's not actually what happens, because once they leave with Spencer, Mary has a second baby. So we have twins. And this kind of makes sense because twins, I think, run down the maternal side of the family. Or is that just a myth? I can't remember. Anyway, twins tend to run in the family. And as we know, Jessica and Mary are twins. So it does make sense that then one of them would also go on to have twins. And that is how we end up with Alex Drake. Alex was adopted by a completely different family and grew up in London and did not have the best upbringing. She then takes Mary's name. Obviously, Mary is Mary Drake. And obviously, they're twins. So again, we have some more full siblings. I would like to clarify as well, I'm using half siblings and full siblings as just like a purely biological term. I don't think it really matters how much of your DNA that they share, whether they're adopted, whether they're half siblings, full siblings, they are still your sibling. I'm just using it in more of the genetic sense to just create a bit of a divide. So where does this bring everybody in this lineup? Okay, so now we have Alison, Jason, Melissa, Spencer, Alex, and Charlotte. How are all these people related to each other? So Charlotte is Alex and Spencer's half-sibling because they share Mary as a mum, but they have separate dads. Charlotte and Melissa genetically are not connected in any way. Charlotte and Jason are cousins and Charlotte and Alison are also cousins because obviously her mum is Mary, sisters with Jessica, therefore their cousins. Now we're going to get a little bit weird once again, because if we cast our minds back, when we first meet Charlotte, she is actually introduced to us as an ex-girlfriend of Jason. And she explains that she did this to get closer to the family and they never actually did anything together, but they did date. They were boyfriend and girlfriend, which gives them not only a green line for cousins, but a pink line for having dated. In terms of other familial connections, she obviously is the niece of Jessica, but we, we had to stop somewhere. So moving on to Alex and Spencer, because both of theirs are going to be the same. So in terms of any half siblings, we have Melissa and we have Jason, because obviously Melissa and Jason's dad is both Peter and so is theirs. But... Because their mother is Mary, it not only makes them half-siblings with Jason, but also cousins with him. Okay, you still following me here? Because even I'm struggling. And um, obviously because they are cousins with Jason, they are in turn cousins with Alison. But only cousins with Alison. Melissa is their half-sibling, Jason is their half-sibling and their cousin, Alison is their cousin. I'm going to do a recap for you at the end, but I don't think it's going to help. And yeah, like I said before, same goes for Alex and Spencer. Their aunt is Jessica. And now you may be thinking to yourself, where can we go from here? Well, I'll tell you where we go from here. Romantic interests. Yep. When Melissa said that Spencer likes to shop out of other people's carts, honestly, that's what the whole of the Hastings De Laurentiis family likes to do. This family is so incredibly weird and incestuous. It dates all of the same people that it's just bizarre. So we're going to start with the first kind of person that we really meet. And that is Ren Kingston. Now, obviously, when we first meet Ren in season one, he is dating and engaged to Melissa Hastings. Here she is right here. Then, while Ren is engaged to Melissa, he kisses her sister. Because of course he does. Because all the men on this show are predatory and weird. And the amount of the age gap relationships is just astounding. I think when I did my ranking of all the PLL couples video, we tallied up about 18 age gap couples, maybe even more. I can't even remember. Spencer and Ren end up kissing quite a few times in the show. I think, you know, we've got season one. I think they might even get together again in season two and in season four or five as well, I think. Um, but they never actually date for like a long period of time. They're never actually official. So I've just given them a red line. The second boyfriend of Melissa's that we meet is Ian Thomas. Oh God, we all know Ian. We all hate Ian. Ian was Melissa's boyfriend prior to the show starting. Then he comes back, um, obviously after Ren gets the boot. And we realize that not only does Ian date Melissa, okay, 
prior to the show starting, he also kissed Spencer and was seeing Alison on the side. Yep. Two 14, 15-year-old girls he was seeing while he was still seeing Melissa. Ian and Melissa also do end up getting married in the show um, up until his death. I would say RIP, but I don't want this man to ever find peace. And they almost have a child together twice as well, but unfortunately both times Melissa does lose the babies. Now, again, Ian is never official with Spencer or Alison, so I've given them both red lines to him. Now we have Toby, precious Toby, and he is Spencer's kind of on again, off again-ish, um, mainly on, I think, for a good chunk of the series, boyfriend. Um, we meet him in season one, and it is alluded to that they do end up together and confirmed in The Perfectionist that they did end up together, but I think they deserved the big wedding. I think more than anyone, they deserve to be together at the end, okay? And it, Marlene, you and me will forever have beef for it. And now you may be thinking to yourself, Lauren, why would you put Toby on the board if he's only got one connection? And that's because he has two. During season seven, Alex traps Spencer. I think actually she does this a little bit before she even traps Spencer. She goes and basically tries to take over Spencer's life. And while she's doing this, convinces Toby that she is Spencer. And while he believes that she is Spencer, they end up sleeping together. So Toby not only has a pink line to Spencer, but unfortunately he also has a red line to Alex. And just when you thought to yourself, oh, she's moved away from Ren, so Ren must be done. No, 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 no. In season seven, we find out that Ren, while he was back in London, bumped into Alex. And obviously because he was clearly in love with Spencer and never got over her, finding someone that looked exactly like Spencer was this man's dream. So, Ren and Alex then begin dating, and they date up until she kills him and turns him into a little diamond. Whoa, I got way too close to saying Ren and Ian are dated just then. My oh my. Honestly, with the way that this family tree is going, I wouldn't be surprised. Now we also have Archer, um, or Elliot Rollins, if you would like to refer to him by his alias. And... Archer comes into it in the second half of season six. He is Charlotte's doctor. And we find out that, you know, while he was being Charlotte's doctor, him and Alison had a romantic connection and they end up dating and eventually end up getting married until he gaslights her, convinces her that she's crazy, impregnates her with somebody else's child and then flees, right? But not before the girls are able to <laughs> kill him. So... Hannah ends up running him over after they rescue Allison, and it's a whole thing, um, and Archer dies. So, yeah, effectively ending his marriage with Allison. And now, again, you may be thinking to yourself, Lauren, why would Archer have an alias? Why would he want to kill Allison? And what is the best motivator for revenge? A scorned lover. Yep, so... The whole reason that Elliot Archer um, even dates and marries Alison is part of a whole revenge plot to avenge Cece and Cece's death. So Charlotte and Archer were together. They would even go on like weird double dates with Alex and Ren. It was a whole thing. And so we also have a pink line between Archer and Charlotte. This line is atrocious. What even happened there? So, you might be thinking to yourself, that's it. It's over. No, it's not. And if you had to guess out of all of these pictures, who are we going to go back to? Whose story is unfinished? If you guessed Ren, you are right. So, not only... Has Ren dated Spencer, Melissa, and Alex? Okay, he has dated every sister up here, aside from Charlotte. He then takes part in a scheme with Alex. When she is big AD, she conspires with Archer to plant 
Emily's eggs into Alison. You heard me right. Okay, you heard me right. If you stop watching Prilla Lies around season four or five, this is going to seem absolutely ludicrous. I promise I'm not lying to you. These are the lengths they went to in this show. Here we have Emily. And obviously Emily and Alison kind of briefly kind of like kiss and whatever, but they do end up dating at the very end of the series and getting engaged. Um, so they get a pink line. We see in the second half of season six that Emily needs money. And to get money, she ends up donating her eggs. Now, AD comes and steals her eggs. And obviously Alex was like, I need somebody. I need a donor. And she chooses Wren. So then Wren and Emily's sperm and eggs, they get turned into an embryo. And they get implanted inside of Alison while she is being held captive by archer in the kind of mental facility that he has her in so incredibly just awful and crazy and why this storyline even existed i don't understand i am not a fan of season seven i don't really like anything that happens in it to be completely honest with you um and i would have written the show completely differently if you want to see a video on how i would have written the show then let me know down below allison then is pregnant with emily and wren's twins so lily and grace are born they are obviously allison was their surrogate mum, which gives them a blue line um and then wren was the sperm donor and emily was the egg donor which gives them both a purple line and obviously a brown line because they are their children. Also, this is another one of my big, big gripes with PLL because whose babies are these? Okay, whose little blonde, blue-eyed babies are these? Because they are not Emily's. They are actually not Emily's, okay? And Emily, well, Shay Mitchell is Filipino. Ren is white, but he has brown hair and like dark green eyes no way in hell okay no way in hell were those two making these little white blonde blue-eyed babies like could you not have just casted babies that looked like emily like why do they look like allison it, honestly <laughs> i know it's only a tiny thing but it just infuriates me why do these babies look like allison None of Allison's, well, I guess not none, because they do say that when you carry a baby, some of your DNA, like, goes on, like, into the baby, sort of, um, but not a lot of it. So why do these babies look like Allison? okay? She was, she was the surrogate, but their actual, ge like, their actual genetics come from Wren and Emily. 50% Wren, 50% Emily does not equal twins that look like Allison. okay? It just doesn't. And, I also feel like what they were trying to do was a little nod to obviously the twin thing. So we have Alex and Spencer, Mary and Jessica, and it seems like, oh, of course, twins run in the family. No, they don't. They run in Alison's family. So if these were Alison's babies, it would make more sense that they were twins. I think they were like, oh, look, twins, twins, twins. Even though it makes absolutely no sense. It makes absolutely no sense. Why do these babies look like this? They're adorable, don't get me wrong. They are adorable babies. They don't look anything like Emily. They don't look anything like her. Um, so that annoys me. Because when you see them, they look like Alison's babies. And it's like, come on, that is not how genetics work. Rant over. So, here you are. This is the entire Hastings De Laurentiis family tree here for you everyone's connections now we're going to quickly go through a recap dear god we're going to go through a quick recap of how everyone's connected and then i'm also going to do as a little bonus tell you how the other liars would be connected in this tree if i did have them because it's possible but it just didn't feel relevant enough to include them starting from the top ted and mary dated and they had charlotte drake okay now then Mary and Peter had a little, a little affair, a little one-time thing, and she got pregnant with twins, Alex and Spencer, making Charlotte their half-sibling. Peter and Veronica had Melissa, so that's their only biological child together, and that also makes Melissa Alex and Spencer's half-siblings. Then Peter had another cheeky little affair with Jessica, 
which resulted in Jason being born, and therefore Jason is Melissa's half-brother. He is also the half-brother of Alex and Spencer, but because their mother is Mary, who is Jessica's twin, they are also cousins with Jason as well. Then Jessica and Kenneth have their only biological child, which is Alison. Alison's half-brother is Jason, and her cousins are Spencer, Alex, and Charlotte. Then we have Toby down here, so Toby dated Melissa, but unknow unknowingly to himself, he also had sex with Alex, her twin sister. Ian was married to Melissa up until his death, but he also kissed Spencer and was kind of kissed slash sort of casually seeing Alison. We then have Archer. Archer was dating and quite committed to Charlotte up until her death. He then married, out of spite, Alison. Um, so that's where that connection is as well. Alison obviously dates Emily. Emily then donates her eggs. Her eggs get stolen. They get um, fertilized with by Wren, and those babies get put into Allison. Allison is the surrogate mum of Lily and Grace, the twins, but Emily and Wren are their biological parents, and Emily and Allison decide to raise them together. I think I got everything. <laughs> I think I got everything. The sun is setting, okay? But I'm pretty I'm pretty proud of this, you know. Now, how would Aria and Hannah fit into this lineup? So there's actually a couple ways that they can fit into this lineup. So if we start with Hannah, Hannah can fit in because Ted dated Ashley, and obviously Ashley is Hannah's mum. You can have it like that. Or you can go through Ren because Ren did kiss Hannah and they had a little bit of a flirty interaction. So you could also include her down here as well. Then in terms of Arya, she's a pretty easy one. Arya dated Jason during the time jump. We see little flashbacks of them together, which then would put Arya just here as having dated Jason. Now that I'm thinking about it, I feel like that actually wouldn't have been that hard to include. And maybe I should have just included them. Maybe I'll add them in. Um, at a later date, I will, I will include them in here. But that is it. That is the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. And thank you so much, like I said, for the Love on the Allison video. I hope you guys like this one as well. And I have loads more fun videos that I'm working on coming up. I can also, I hear you guys asking for Gossip Girl Part 3. I promise I'm editing it right now. It's not fully filmed just because, like I've mentioned a couple times, I don't actually live where it lives anymore. So I have to travel to go there but I'm editing it now. I'm really hoping to get it up soon-ish. I can't give you an exact date, but just know I haven't forgotten about it. It's just a huge project. So yeah, that is it. I will see you guys in my next video. Um, yeah, bye.